we want you to be a part of our studio audience. If you're in the Toronto area, contact us. Well, before the break, we asked our audience the question, do expectant parents have the right to know the sex of their unborn baby? And here's how the studio audience voted. Almost 70% said yes. And for our TV viewers, send the answers to the addresses on the screen. And we'll calculate yours as well. Well, with modern technology, the sex of a fetus can be determined as early as 18 weeks. Our next guest is Carrie Bowman, a bioethicist with the University of Toronto. His specialties include genetics and ethical questions in emerging medical technologies. Carrie, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Well, um, <clears throat> you say we should be questioning why people want to know the gender of their baby. Yeah, well, you know, for the last couple of decades, people have routinely within Canada known the gender of their babies if they want to know. Now, we see lots of patients that don't want to know, by the way. There's people that say it doesn't matter to me. Don't tell me. Doesn't matter. But when a person really strongly wants to know, I think it's important that we have a conversation with patients about why it is so important. Wow. And you know what? I say this with caution because we don't want to go back to the days where a woman, you know, was kind of on trial and had to explain, you know, why, you know, mm -hmm. for example, if a woman wanted an abortion, she would be in a position a few decades ago of very much being on trial. And I'm not suggesting that. But I think we have to start having conversations as to why the gender of an unborn child is so important. It can lead to the temptation of family balancing, of mm -hmm. saying, I want it to be just this way. What kind of Pandora's box are we opening up with that? A very big one. Because, you know, what's, in, what's happening increasingly with, with emerging technologies, it's, it's not just do you want to have a child, it's what kind of child do you want to have. So this, this is, you know, a, a manifestation and often a cultural manifestation in this case. But it's kind of the tip of the iceberg of a whole lot of other things. Okay, take us there. What, what are we tipping into as what we're able to know about choices? Yeah, well, you know, here's the kind of child that I would want to have and here's the type of things I don't want to see. Gender or the sex of the unborn is one. Ability, disability. You know, we don't have the technology to say at this point, eye color, hair color, those things, height. But those days are coming. And so I, I think as a society, we really have to start the conversation about do you want to have a child or is it a specific kind of a child? Because it's really beginning to shift and this is part of it. So does this mean that our unrestrictive access to abortion has not caught up with science? Science is taking us somewhere our ethic never thought we were going to go. Well, science is taking us to a place we never thought it would go. And, and you know, w one of the risks these days is that we, with increased genetic testing, that we're going to go down a road as to being very selective about the kind of people that are going to be born. And this, is, this could be very problematic. So I don't want to completely get away from the gender or the sex aspect, because this is a huge one. But I think we need to start talking about these kinds of things, because there's more and more genetic information available. How do we do this in Canada? We have a prime minister who says we're not going to open the abortion debate. Mm -hmm. We have science that's taken us to a place we understand the fetus and our choices better than ever before. Yeah. How do we discuss this? Well, I think most Canadians, and I'm not saying all Canadians, believe me, I'm not saying all Canadians, but what we, seem to, what we seem to know is that most Canadians actually don't want the abortion debate reopened. Mm. But if we're going to have abortion based on the, the fundamental facts that women you know, need, have rights included in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom, then we have to have conversations about the amount of genetic testing we're doing. And you know, if we look at sex selection, it's Canada, but it's global. Right now, it's ultrasound. Very soon, e even now, it's possible blood test. After that, it'll be urine tests. The day is coming where the corner drugstore will be able to tell you if you're having a boy or a girl. Okay, and so you brought this out to the, you know, the cornerstone of why we have open access to abortion, no restrictive laws, is the mm -hmm. charter. Mm -hmm. But now we're able to say, well, shouldn't unborn baby girls have protection under the charter. Mm -hmm. Can we not apply charter rights mm -hmm. to the fetus? You know, you'd need a lawyer to fully answer that, but it's something we should certainly be talking about. And what about the rights of the disabled as well? You know, because, because one of the things, you know, we can say, well, you know, the baby on the way is Down syndrome. 
Um, is it fair, is it right that a, a pregnancy should be terminated because a baby has Down syndrome? So, you know, how do, we, how do we balance these kinds of things? And I think we need to start, you know, just discussing as a society what's occurring, why these things are important, and, and really beginning with that point. Um, to, you know, to go down the road of recriminalizing abortion, I think very few people would want to do that. But the discussion is even just so hard to get going. Yeah, in this it country. is. It is. And is this the place for it? We start at the media. We. Where, well, I think where it, it probably is. As hard as the conversations are, you know, the, the the article in the Canadian Medical Association Journal was very provocative. The thirty yeah, week. Yeah, got thing. us all going. Yeah, it absolutely got us all going. But that might be a good thing that it got us all going because we're all talking about something very, very important. And within the cultural communities involved, it's very complex. It, you know, it, it's a hard issue within the communities. Thank you, Carrie Bowman, and uh, more on your information on our website. Thank you. But now it's time to find out what you think. Would you choose the sex of your child if you could? Yes or no? Send your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter, or leave a video message on our website. We'd like to know what you think. Be part of the conversation. Our studio audience is taking a live vote, and I'll have those results when we come back. Coming up, one woman who fights to protect women and girls at risk, Naomi Zacharias gives us a global perspective on their value.